I'm here just about on time, I think. Let's bring this in a little bit closer. How's that? Got a big fluffy warm jumper on. Rich Mitch, he's still here. Rich Mitch says, is your cat enjoying Christmas dreamies? Is there such a thing as Christmas dreamies? If so, I'll look out for them. She has standard dreamies. She likes the yellow packet with the cheese inside. She gets a few of those every now and then. Yep, still here. Hey, Rich. Good to see you. Um, oh, get comfy. Let's get comfy. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Good to see you. I might be too hot. I might be too hot in this jumper, you know. I might have to. I don't know. What have I got underneath? I've just got a vest underneath. I'm not sure that's appropriate. It's not the middle of summer anymore, is it? But it is quite warm here. Got the heating on, treating myself, <laughs> pushing the boat out. Hey Mel, uh, says hello, good to join you this evening. Um, let's let's start. Uh, what are we wearing fragrance wise? Let me know and I will try not to knock my drink over whilst I show you what I've got on. I've made the biggest dent in this bottle in about a week. So this was pretty much full. Hey, um, this was pretty much full when I got it. And I have just drained it. <laughs> uh, Rich is wearing Amen Pure Leather. Amen, as in let us pray. Amen. Amen. Mugler's Amen. Pure Leather. How's it going for you, Rich? That's quite a modern fragrance for you. Um, how, <laughs> Rich, do you want to talk about how you, do you care about the whole Balenciaga thing? Do you care? Are you following? Um, I, there's a lot of creepy weird stuff uh, online about the whole situation Balenciaga is not a brand I've ever I don't think I've ever bought anything from I don't have a perfume and I certainly don't have any of their fashion um, curious if anyone's got any opinions on that because it's a very much an opinion piece at the moment in the media so yeah I'm wearing Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense and I have massively dented it. This is the most beautiful bottle. And the reason I've dented it so hard is because, it's not just because I wear it, because I have worn it quite a few times and I overspray because actually, despite being intense, it's not a really big, strong projector. It's reasonably close. It, it does do a nice little CRG thing, but it doesn't project a lot. Not on me anyway. Um, so, I have worn it quite a few times since I got it because it's the newest one to me. So usually you're, I don't know about you, but when you get a new fragrance, especially if you're not buying loads at once, like I'm not doing anymore, you, when you get a new one, you do wear it quite a lot. So I've done that, but I've also <laughs> been spraying my pillows. I wake up in the morning, I reach for it and I spray it. And yeah, so it's not just been sprayed on me. It's got sprayed on my coat. It's got sprayed on my hat when I went out in the cold, in the snow. I uh, sprayed my hat in it so that I would get some sillage off of the hat. And I sprayed my pillows and my sheets. So yeah, I adore this bottle. I'm so, 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 so loving having this. Um, and I'm really enjoying the fragrance and I never thought I would. Oh, thank you, Rich Mitch. <laughs> Le Quack, thank you so much. That's very, very kind of you. So yeah, I'm really enjoying my Coco Mademoiselle. Intense. And it's a ambery woody fragrance according to the stuff on the back because it is a tester so i like testers when they've got the notes or what have yous on them <laughs> quite warm i don't know if to take my top off as i said earlier i've got a vest on um so that's my scent of the night and let's see what rich says about balenciaga now oh, where's the old live stream stuff oh here we are here we are uh, Rich says, I do care about the Balenciaga thing, but the Poor Hum was released in 1990 and I won't let their bad noncery ruin my favourite fragrance. Hear, hear, Rich. I see calls for throw away all your Balenciaga stuff. What's the point in that? Why, why put decent things that you obviously love into, um, what do you call it, landfill? Like, that's that's just not, it's not going to get any, it's not going to get anyone anywhere, is it? So yeah, I knew you'd I knew you'd have an opinion. Why am I out of breath? I tell you why, because I'm drinking gin and I'm slightly allergic. 
Well, I'm allergic to alcohol. <laughs> I'm a bit allergic to all alcohol. I, gin seems to be the worst. Um, no, it's not gin, though. It's not. It's not gin. It's um, pink vodka. It's a rose vodka and tonic. So I thought it was gin because I'm drinking it with tonic, but it's not gin. Scotty too hot. Is Scotty here? Let's have a look. Here he is. He says, hey, Claire. <laughs> off, off, off. Uh, Peter says virtue signaling. I've talked about the Balenciaga thing, I think. Um, I might have to take it off. If you can tolerate me in a vest with my flabby arms out, um, I am going to strip off because I'm too hot. And you don't want me all sweaty. I don't know. Like, if this is horrendous, just let me know. Let's make sure my bra strap at least is not showing. <sighs> it's better. I haven't even got a necklace on. I'm naked. <laughs> And we have Maddie. She says, evening everyone, evening to Maddie. Um, uh, have I finished my tree? Um, I know, I managed to put lights on it, these, um, these lights here, but I've only still got three decorations, so they're the three that you can see. <laughs> the rest are still in the bag over there to go on. So yeah, I still haven't finished the tree. These lights aren't great because I've put too much up top and then of course they've run out down bottom so I have to readjust them when I could be bothered which is probably when I take them down in January <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, let me know what you're wearing a Lizzie Bean what are you wearing a Peter I don't think you've told us what you're wearing Scott Maddie let me know what you're wearing uh, it'd be good to know and we are here to talk about festive fragrances. Um, is it a perfume bottle decoration too? Right, it is. I got these in Zara, I think it was a couple of, well, at least two or three years ago. But yeah, so um, perfume bottle Christmas decks. It's, it's an absolute must have, isn't it? <laughs> and Peter's wearing old Paloma Picasso for me. Uh, Scott says Noir de Noir, very, very sexy. Uh, Alex is wearing Bentley for Men. Hello, Alex. Intense. Bentley for Men, intense. Hello, Adam. It says Good evening, Claire, and chat. And Gajuro, good evening, greetings from Croatia. I love Croatia. Absolutely love Croatia. Beautiful, beautiful country. Can't wait to go back. And Emmy's wearing Abime, I, I don't know how you pronounce it actually. Abim or Abime from Violet, which I did test, and it's uh, to me it was lots of woods, very woodsy, woodsy as. Amy is here, hi from Oklahoma, uh, wearing Kais, Coca alla Vaniglia, very nice. Uh, Juro is wearing uh, Bepitem de Fer from Serge Luton. I just did a video featuring three Serge Luton fragrances. Totally gonna get into exploring more from Serge Luton because I mean they're kind of like um when you first get into fragrances, they're almost like the one of the brands that you really should investigate quite early on. And I remember getting into Sergi and there was one other that was really popular. And I had a sample of Fee Unergi and I also had Fee de Berlin, a beautiful, rich rose, which I know uh, Lizzie's just got a bottle of and absolutely loves. And um, my next, uh, say next purchase, well, I'm hoping to get the Fils de Joie, Fils de Joie, um, which is a really rich, red juice like Fida Berlin but it's uh jasmine although to me it smells rosy it smells like jasmine and rose there's no rose listed did anyone get that does anyone else find it kind of like a, a a combination of jasmine and rose a very rich and jammy and incensey that's what I get love it so yeah I really want that um Maddie's wearing Shazam off of 4160 Tuesday. That is such a festive fragrance. And the dry down on that is stunning. That lab, it's like a really sticky caramelized labdanum. Beautiful. Um, Peter says, Rich and I were saying Lutans are niche gateway. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. You put that a lot better than me. But that's what I mean. Yeah, I really do think. There's some wild and crazy stuff in the Lutans range, but there's also much more 
easier to wear. Clair de Musk um, Bois and Bois Vigny, very easy to wear. If you're only used to designers, you could totally wear quite a lot of Serge Luton fragrances, I think. Uh, M says, can't wait to try Serge Luton. Yeah, they, they uh, are a must try it. There's a lot though. <laughs> There's a massive amount of them now. So um, yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, the, the cage one, uh, cage, quite a new one. It's quite a nice sort of like almondy, slightly gourmandy one. I tried it in Harrods quite a while ago now. It was quite nice. Um, but yeah, for me, my absolute must have right now is that uh, Fees de Choix. Really crazy about it. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm a little bit out of breath. Oh, I was dancing to Lana Ritchie and Elton John, so my, that might have been it. There's nothing like, I don't think, an evening to yourself, listening to your favourite music, singing and dancing, like no one's watching because they're not. <laughs> the, uh, my neighbours that side... Uh, they run the local Chinese. They're lovely, by the way. And um, and they're always running that Chinese, so they're never there. So I'm quite safe to sing along <laughs> at the top of my lungs. And then I don't have neighbours that side. Or they're, like, right down a hill and they're on another road. So there's no way they'll hear me. So I'm safe. I can dance. I can sing. No one sees me. No one hears me. Uh Hey Peter, Fragrance View is here. Uh, Juro says, I agree. Once you've made a full circle, there's always something in the Luton's range to come back to, Peter. So yeah, definitely lots of praise for Serge Luton. Um, right, so let's get on with it. If you haven't shared your scent of the night, do so now. Or forever hold your peace. You don't have to hold your peace, really, you don't. But you can share now if you want. And I'm going to talk about festive fragrances. So fragrances that, for me, I will wear across the festive period. Um, and Yella is judging me. Um, is that from the picture on the thumbnail? Or is it something else? She is actually judging me. She's sitting over there. She's annoyed because I fed her some food that she decided is not good enough. So she's mostly left it. And then I was just standing in the kitchen and I felt someone watching me with evil eyes. And she's just sat on the floor outside the kitchen looking at me like that. It's like just telling me I have to choose another food and feed it to her. Um, but I'm being tough at the moment. She will go back to it. She'll eat it in the end. But I'm like, I'm, I'm a tough mother. <laughs> um, Right, so yeah, festive fragrances. Let's get, let's get on with this. Festive fragrances. So these are all fragrances I would wear. So I've already done a video on party fragrances, like Christmas party fragrances. And I thought I would do this live stream on fragrances to wear just around the whole Christmas period, whether that's, you know, Christmas Eve drinks with friends, visiting family over Christmas, your Christmas Day scent, all of that. So... I've picked a selection here and um, do uh, shout in the comments, let me know what you'll be wearing on the particular occasions or days, nights over the Christmas period. Have you sort of picked them out or do you have like a rough idea what you might be choosing? And uh, yeah, so for me, one of them, I've already mentioned it once, so I'm going to give it a very quick mention. I almost certainly will be wearing this a few times around this Christmas period, whether it's for drinks with friends, whether it's um, meet, meeting people for lunch, whatever. I do really like this Coco Mademoiselle Intense at the moment. It's floating my boat. I really enjoy it. It's, it's a little bit flirtatious. It's fun. It's not the biggest, loudest perfume, but it is kind of recognisable and iconic. And I just, I think... Just the whole package when you look at the bottle and everything kind of feels Christmassy to me. You know, it even looks a bit like this Christmas decoration. <laughs> of course, the Christmas decoration probably stole its uh, inspiration from this bottle. But yeah, I don't know. And doesn't Chanel kind of say Christmas? Nah, I don't know. But yeah, so I will be wearing that one for sure. And of course, we all know how that smells, I think. Does everyone know how that smells? 
It's a, a jasmine rose with some resin. I think it's a bit of labdanum. It's got a little rich, sweet resinous base. It is an amber floral, so vanilla -y. Uh, I think there's some white musk. It's not as loud, it's not as sharp as the original cocoa mud. It's richer, smoother, more rounded, and it's not as big, it's not as loud. Hey, Mavid. Mavid Day is in the house, good to see you. So let's move on then. So one I thought that I would probably choose for a night out um, is Woman in Gold off of Killian. So this is primarily to me a rose fragrance, but it's got this amazing muskiness. Like it's got this chewy, almost marshmallow like note. And I've noticed this note before in other things. It's in the Tycoon from St. Giles. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if there's Ambret in here. Um, I'm sure I saw a comment from Amy. Oh, it's gone, okay. Um, Drawn by is here, lovely to see you. Uh, says, hello Claire in chat, wearing Dior Homme. Oh, very, very nice. Yeah, so this one, I can't remember all the notes. It smells like, it smells like rose and geranium. It's got a little bit of the sharpness that geranium can bring. And then it's got this, musky and marshmallow like thing about it as well and it's not the most changeable it doesn't have the most development it's got quite a good presence so it's really good for sort of a loud, a loud or lively pub or something like that and it's got a little freshness a little liveliness almost a champagne sparkle to it and it's pretty I've got compliments from wearing it and I just think it's a really great one for a few drinks around that Christmas festive lovely period yeah I haven't worn this one for a, quite a while actually so I'm definitely gonna wear it around this whole time this whole holiday period why am I so out of breath I don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> okay right next one does anyone know that one try that one like that one let me know so uh, let's have a think. I'm gonna talk about this one. I don't wear this as much now. Uh, it's Ruby Kona from Pure Distance. This one is, I would say, patchouli fragrance predominantly. And I think that's why I don't wear it too much because actually the patchouli is really quite strong in the opening and it takes quite a while for it to calm down. There is rose and there's definitely a stunning vanilla sort of amber accord going on in here and musk and it's really addictive. When you get into the dry down, when that patchouli calms right down, it is an amazing fragrance, like it's absolutely amazing. But it does take a little while to get there and I think that's what's holding me off wearing it lately. I did spray this on some paper quite a while ago just to try to get to the dry down but on paper of course everything takes so long to dry down and it still smells quite heavy on the patchouli <laughs> um but i do smell that sweet resinous ambery dry down with some rose and yeah it, it is really really nice so this is like a special occasion and it should be for the price like these are ridiculously expensive pure distance um yeah they're very very expensive but it's rich, it's strong, it's extract puffum, uh, 28%, it says it on the label, 28%, I think this is Cecil Zarokian, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Cecil Zarokian, and yeah, really, really beautiful, kind of like syrupy, syrupy feel to it, it's the vanilla amber accord that really gets to my heart, and maybe mixed with a rose, you know, kind of like that does it for me. The excessive patchouli in the opening. I, I was okay with it for a while and now I'm not so much. But this would be a fabulous night out around the festive period, I think. Because it's very strong. You get a big projection. So you can go somewhere really busy and absolutely compete with everyone else who's wearing Alien, <laughs> Coco Mademoiselle, La Vie Belle, etc. You are going to stand out amongst the crowd wearing Rubicona. Let's pop that down there. Okay, 
yeah it is good it really is good M says my bathhouse fragrance is patchouli and black pepper and faith is always make me feel Christmassy strong and spicy that faith is I tested in a video that I recorded yesterday which I told you about because you sent it to me so M sent me a load of samples and I've made a video about it and that's going up tomorrow um, the faith is one it's so weird because you're saying it's Christmassy and I I obviously didn't look up the notes I just smelt it and I said this smells like pine, like pine to me it smells like a pine forest it makes me think like it does make me think of Christmas trees and pine's not listed it was um, like oud and spices and all sorts but it smelt very Christmassy to me hello Valentina so nice to see you I meant to message you and tell you that I did a video on those fragrances you sent me the florals so I don't know if you've seen it but they are up um, I just picked a few of my absolute sort of like not necessarily favorites but the ones that I thought really stood out and made a video eventually because I've been meaning to do that one for ages so nice to see you Valentina Oh, LB. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, LB. I will. Do you know what I had today? I had an eggnog latte and it was absolutely amazing. So I will. I will grab myself another eggnog latte with that. Thank you very, very much. Mwah. Thank you. Uh, Amy says, what made you finally jump on the Coco Mademoiselle wagon? I love them all, but it just seems so far from the type of fragrance you usually go for. You're so right. I know it's weird. I think it's because it's just it's always grabbed me I've always enjoyed it on other people and I've always enjoyed that effect when you walk past someone and they've got this big and recognizable fragrance on and Coco Mademoiselle is one in particular that I always notice on people even if they're walking half a mile in front of me because it's such a strong fragrance there was something about it that's always kind of like I've loved it on other people I love the effect of it and when I go through an airport I will generally do a little spray of it somewhere because I just quite enjoy it and then I don't know what happened I think it was the influence of Instagram and something made me buy the oil I just thought what a luxury and I could just have the oil enjoy the smell without having the big commitment of the big fragrance but then once I had the oil I felt like I really wanted <laughs> the perfume and I thought I'm probably not going to wear the perfume very much I just kind of want to wear it with the oil and actually at the moment I am really enjoying the um, the intense version that I've got so yeah hard to explain sometimes I go off on funny tangents <laughs> but yeah I, I'm just loving it right now um and this is I'm rubbish at sending anything <laughs> No, I'm crap as well. I've been meaning I have been meaning to catch up with people. I've lost touch. I haven't spoken to Sue Poo in a while. I really need to speak to Sue and just check on check on her and make sure she's okay. And um yeah, a few other people like pe friends in my actual real life as well. Um I'm just I'm crap at like staying in touch, sending cards, just like I'm just lazy with it all really. <laughs> When did Coco Mademoiselle come out? That is a good question. Does anyone know the answer? Valentina might. Valentina is uh, aficionado on lots of stuff. Uh, Valentina says, just literally just watched it. Laugh my head off watching your reaction to Tuba as Criminal. It's one of my most favourite. In the summer heat is amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> In the summer heat, Tuba is Criminal. I mean, I don't know. Yeah so medicinal to start with it's so weird but it's really it's really inter it's really interesting and it changes and it, it gets quite wearable in the end fascinating stuff <laughs> um oh lily says hello lily lily says 2001 for coco mad um oh Lizzie says, popped my lost chest, she means lost cherry, for my evening scent. Barely wear it anymore. You mentioned that Serge Rose fragrances earlier. We'll send you some when Christmas is out of the way. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Yeah, the Rose de, Rose de Berlin. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping to have 
a bottle of Fille de Joie, which is a jasmine fragrance, but to me it smells like jasmine and rose. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I can send you some of that. It's the same sort of colour juice, like a dark red. Uh, Valentina, do you get any rose from Fille de Joie? Tell me, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so Valentina same in 2001 as well for Coco Mad. Rich is saying, I wonder if I can get vintage Coco Mad. Rich is obsessed with tracking down vintage fragrances. So funny. Karine is here. Uh, she says, it smells, Fille de Joie smells like a waxy jasmine to me. Okay. Maybe it's the colour, because it's so red. It just makes me think that it's got rose in it. But... It smells rosy to me. I've got my little sample here, my empty sample. Oh, hang on. Hang on, my drink's in the way, so I'll just have a quick drink. Right, yeah, there's my sample. You can just about see the colour of the Fille de Joie. <laughs> I've got some more on my upper lip. <laughs> yeah, it smells like rose. It smells like. Jasmine, jammy, jammy jasmine, like not normal jasmine. <laughs> Condensed, cooked, thickened, slightly sweetened jasmine, but some rose pot puree mushed in there as well. And some incense. Yeah, that's what it is to me. Fille de joie. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to own it. It's sort of gothic, it's kind of like gothic dark, dark fragrance. Um, Lizzie says, always wanted to try the Fille de Joie, though it's Jasmine, always heard good things. Um, be careful to stain your clothes. Yeah, I, but I guess it's the same for the Fille de Berlin. Um, and another one I'm going to talk about actually, definitely stained your skin. So this one I did mention recently in a video, and this is another one that's also on my wish list. I've got my noisy tower samples. Uh, this one is, you can see the colour of that, Le Maroc Pour L. I put some here already. Um, Le Maroc Pour L is, is rose and jasmine. When you spray it on your skin, let's spray it and I'm going to show you. So when it was the original formula, it was sort of like dark red and it stained your, you know, it stained your clothes dark red. Now, you can actually, I think I can see some yellow from the earlier. <laughs> so I look a little jaundice, jaundiced in the wrist area. But I'll show you now, look, I'll just spray a tiny bit. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> so it used to be really red, now it's yellow. And it actually stains your skin quite quite yellow <laughs> and I do think this is an amazing festive fragrance because it's rich so it's got this uh, combination of fake tan fragrance <laughs> Look at that. it's got this combination of jasmine and rose and it's very rich dense thick but sweet and lovely lovely and it's got it's got this incensey feel like unlit incense it's not particularly smoky fragrance it's more like unlit incense sticks and resins which obviously incense is made of resins but you know what I mean like that ambery resinous base it's amazing like it is absolutely amazing and I love this more than I even loved the original formula. This feels like it has less, I'm not sure if there was oak moss. I, I feel like there was oak moss and I think there still is, but it's really calmed down. And I know there was vetiver, that's calmed down I think as well. So the dry down's more ambery sweet, whereas it used to just have a, a sheepra-esque feel to it. And it used to go on forever. And now it lasts about the right amount of time for me. Um, you know, I get a whole day out of it for sure. But I used to get a day and a night out of it. It's like, it was crazy. But the way that it dried down wasn't as nice to me. It wasn't quite as sweet or as rich. It was more sheep pretty. 
than it is now. So yeah, I actually like this new formula better, but I don't like what it does to my skin. <laughs> That's not pretty. Like if you're going out for a night and you sprayed yourself up here, it's not going to be pretty to have these yellow stains. So that's something to be <laughs> careful of. But Le Maroc Pour Elle is an amazing kind of like, it feels a bit spicy. It just feels perfect for a winter winter holiday celebration, whatever, you know, wherever you, you are going, whatever you're doing, it's warm, it's rich, it's strong. Yeah, I really love it. Hello, Basic Molaco. Nice to see you. So, having trouble breathing because of my very mild alcohol thing, allergy. She says, taking another sip. Who's got a drink? Who's got a snack? Let me know. So yeah, another, let's move on to another fragrance for festive celebrations and stuff. This is more of um, a general, because to me this one, uh, oh hey, draw, uh, Lewis, Lewis. <laughs> hey, drawn out, hello Lewis. Um, this is a signature scent for me. If I was to choose a signature scent, this would be way up there, but all across the festive period, holidays and stuff. This is a fragrance that you want people to sniff when they hug you because it is so beautiful. When you first spray Unspoken Musk from Francesca Biankin, you can see I've done a lot there. You can get this in 100ml now. And when I use that up, if as so long as I still feel as in love as I do now, I probably will get the 100ml because I love it. And eventually, I think she's going to make a body oil. Excuse me. Um, and I totally have to get that too. I want to be drowned in it. I want to be drowned, de drenched, <laughs> uh, dripping. I want to be dripping in unspoken musk. And um, yeah, so unspoken musk does have some animalic notes. It's got a civet and castorium, I believe. But it's not too dirty for me. I know it was for Maddie. I think Maddie struggled with the dirtiness. And some, some people have said it's a bit too dirty in the opening. I find that slight dirtiness not too bad. And it doesn't last that long. And then, I mean, really, it's immortal. I would call it an immortal musk perfume. It could be called immortal musk because it's immortal and musk. Although there's definitely a lot of arts as well. Iris and vanilla. Um... It's a little fruity for some reason. I think there's like, like honey nuances because of the immortelle. So it's kind of like rich, sweet, fruity, honeyed, musk, iris. And then the dry down really is quite simplistic compared to a lot of Francesca Bianchi fragrances. Quite simplistic kind of vanillic iris musk with that immortelle hanging around for quite a long time. But mostly giving it a fruity fruity honeyish aspect rather than the curry like nuances that Immortel can bring I don't really get that from it so that's a good thing for me um but the thing with this is it's just the most huggable cozy oh, bury your nose in whoever's wearing its neck kind of thing so I just think it's perfect for if you're out and about visiting family, visiting friends, exchanging presents, all of that stuff, just, you know, it smells like a cashmere scarf. It smells like a hug from someone you love. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's unspoken musk is just perfection, I think. It's not such a bold statement, rather it's something that just melts into your own skin and it's enticing and, and cozy and lovely whereas say the Le Maroc Pour Elle that's a statement that's quite a big fragrance that's kind of like jumping out and and greeting people unspoken musk is is slowly enticing people in Karine says sounds like one to try Absolutely. Yeah, you might find the animalic notes too much. You might be absolutely okay with them like I am. 
each to their own. Basic says, my favourite Francesca Bianchi is Black Knight. Not a good idea to wear it to a festive dinner I tried. That's quite heavy on the leather from memory. So yeah, that would, might be a little <laughs> jarring. Did you get a negative comment by any chance? Sounds like something happened. Uh, Valentina says, just spray some antibiotic must from the sample you sent. I can taste toffee. Ah, yeah. Well, that's not unspoken musk. I did have it. Actually, yeah. Yes, I put it over here. Do you know what? It does smell a bit caramelly. Yeah. Um, I sprayed that about an hour ago with unspoken musk. Yeah, caramelly, musky, iris. Yeah. Yummy. I, I would say it's quite gourmand. I think it's quite gourmand. Um, so, we're getting through these, you know. I'm going um, to be a short live stream. So I was thinking Christmas Day, what's the, what's the fragrance you wear on Christmas Day? Like, you've got to pick out something special, haven't you? And I don't know that this will be my Christmas Day fragrance, but I think it will be a really good contender. And it's Bengal Rouge from Papillon. So this one, if I can get the lid off. This one is a spicy honey in the opening. Always reminds me of honey and lemon. Um, honey and lemon, but there's a spiciness. So there's no spices in this fragrance. I remember specifically asking Liz. She says the spices come from the sandalwood. So it's a sandalwood fragrance. And there's an amazing ambery dry down. And there's some rose in here as well. I can't remember all the notes. Uh, Kareen says, I love leather, but some animalic or poopy notes can bother me. Uh, wearing Mystic Sugar today, but I think I'll wear Nuit Etoile for Christmas. Nuit Etoile is that um, Anik, Anik Gutel? Gutel? Is it Gutel? Um, a Mystic Sugar I've not heard of. So who's Mystic Sugar by? Um, Juro says, seeing the basics comment, um, I must have missed that. Oh, okay, seeing the basics comment, curious what would you like to smell on a man on a festive occasion? Um, I would like to smell any of the Dior, like the Dior Homme Intense Dior Homme Parfum, I would absolutely love. Fahrenheit as well, they're all Dior, they're all Dior's. Uh, Fahrenheit for sure, I love the... Uh, absolute and the parfum not the richer versions but I'm happy to smell the original that lovely rustic sort of more um, gritty man scent um, yeah but yeah even it's not a particularly Christmassy or, or rich fragrance but uh, D&G Pour Homme I absolutely love that if you if like he's wearing a crisp white shirt do your uh, Dolce and Gabbana Pour Homme D&G Pour Homme, perfect like classic, crisp beautiful, yeah there's a few to be going on with uh, Basic's going to go for Timbuktu this holiday, safe for choice and uh, Jure says Fahrenheit absolutely was great indeed yeah, stunning fragrance yeah, so Bengal Rouge for me is a definite contender for Christmas Day because it's rich, it's spicy and opulent and has this gorgeous caramelized dry down it's not a gourmand but it goes a little gourmandish to me just a, the most stunning uh, resins and vanilla-y kind of caramelized dry down it's absolutely beautiful so perfect christmas day fragrance and i think i've only got one more left so if anyone else wants to share what they'll be wearing over the christmas holidays then do so and I do have to have one from one of my favorite perfumers of all time and it's Tiane Reinfeldt and it's Honey Amber I've gone for this is the most special rich sweet exotic floral so you could wear this in the middle of summer. Maybe not on a summer's day. It might be a bit too rich and sweet. But there's something a little uh, spicy and rich about it that also makes it absolutely perfect on a cold day. And for me, this would be an amazing 
fragrance really for any situation over the holidays it is it's a beautiful fragrance and people are going to enjoy it it's got a decent projection decent longevity so you could wear it to a lively bigger event you know lots of people and still stand out or you could use less sprays for a more intimate you know meeting uh, friends for lunch or meeting family for dinner you know you could totally wear this and it just smells beautiful i think you're going to get compliments it's got frangipani it's got other exotic white florals so it's it's got a honeyed feel to it the flowers feel honeyed like the nectar nectar of the gods i mean it's, it's ambrosia of the gods it's it's delectable it's golden it's rich it's sweet it's quite sweet maybe too sweet for some people this is about as sweet as i generally go with a fragrance and yeah absolutely love it honey amber really really beautiful exotic white floral that i love i love all these perfumes i've talked about it's like there's not enough days in the week and there's not enough skin <laughs> It's quite a lot of skin on my body, covering <laughs> covering some inches of flesh. <laughs> but there's still not enough skin to wear all of these beautiful perfumes. Um, very lucky to have such a nice collection of fragrance. Um, okay. So, I'm kind of waning. Uh, I know I've not gone on for too long, but I feel... I've got a little bit of kidney pain, which starting to be normal for me nothing wrong with them according to the scans but yeah got a little problem it's my own fault for drinking i'm not asking for sympathy i probably shouldn't drink but actually before i started drinking i had some chinese um so my lovely neighbor <laughs> next door she's so lovely took in a parcel for me today which she's going to drop by later but um i rang her up to order some chinese because <laughs> i couldn't be bothered to get anything from the shop and um Oh, bless her, she treated me to Chinese tonight for Christmas, which is really sweet, and she's just so lovely. And But after I ate the Chinese, I almost instantly got a pain in my left kidney area, so I wonder if it's food-related, salt-related maybe. Um, probably shouldn't eat so much salt and then drink. This is only my second drink of the night, by the way, but um, yeah, I suppose I'm not helping myself. <laughs> uh, Lily just ordered Chinese. Woohoo! What are you getting? So I had... Crispy chilli beef, salt and pepper chicken and some rice. And I've got leftovers, <laughs> which I'll try and kill myself with tomorrow. Hydrate and electrolyte. Yes, you're right, Lily. I've got some of those electrolyte tablets. I'm going to do that now. Mm. Anyway, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to mention one fragrance here. And it's um, sesame chicken and hot and sour. It's lovely. Um... I smell a La Via Belle today. So I went to Blue Water, which is a shopping centre, and I smelled quite a few different fragrances. Nothing really excited me, and actually the one that I liked the best, believe it or not, was a La Via Belle, and it's called Low, like L, L apostrophe E A O, Low something, and um, it's an iris, it's, it's emphasis on the iris, and I've got that on here. And it's really nice. I mean, it smells like Levia Bell. And it's strong. Like, this sat over there. And I kept getting whiffs of it. Really, really strong. I think... Let's add this to the list. This would be a perfect party or um, visiting friends and family kind of fragrance. It's quite big, quite loud, quite noticeable. So... You know, it's not an intimate fragrance, but if you want to make more of an impact, I actually think this is really nice. Um, so yeah, it's La Via Belle, and it's called Low something, and it's the iris. It describes itself as iris and gourmand, and I think it's fairly new. It might be limited edition, so I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not giving you the proper name, like the full-on proper name. If anyone knows what it is, please share. That would be great. Um, Nothing to find, hello, nothing to find, says, I've had kidney pains off and on last year in my early 40s, having potassium 
in my diet gets rid of it. Too much caffeine can stimulate it. Potassium. Okay, I will find out how to get some potassium in my diet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, what, mid-40s now. I've been suffering with my kidney pain since last year. Uh, all came about when I had a problem. I had, it's a very long story, and I don't want to go into it. For Many of you already know. Um, I had fake boobs. I had them for 15 years. I started to get a lot of health problems, like too many to mention now. And then uh, the only thing left to do, because the doctors couldn't really find anything wrong with me, the only thing left to do was to get my tits out, which I did. Went to Lithuania, had an operation, removed them. Pretty much cured 98% of my problems. And the kidney pain went away for quite a long time, but it did come back early this year. I went through a stressful time, quite an unpleasant uh, sort of relationship thing. Um, and I did start to get a lot of kidney pains. I had acupuncture. That seemed eventually to clear it. And it's just come back again with some other issues I'm having at the moment. So, yeah, there we go. Too much information now, I think. Um, Untouchable says, I'm addicted to Montel Intense Cafe. That, do you know what? I nearly put that in this list. I've got travel size and I nearly brought that down. Yes, it's a really great um, rich rose coffee vanilla fragrance. Have I had a chance to sh try Shalimar Millicene Tonka, says Valentina. Yes, uh, Lizzie Bean sent me a sample and the two or three times I've sprayed it on, I've forgotten I sprayed it on. and I So I like it when I spray it on. Then I go away and I get on with life and then I'll be like, what the hell is that? I really like it and I can't remember what I sprayed. And eventually I realise it's Millicene Tonka. So... Millicene Tonka is a beautiful amber. The dry down is amazing. So yes, I do actually really like it. I'm not going to buy it because I have some amazing ambery fragrances already. But I really like it. Um, yeah, I think it. Um, I think it was Lizzie. Or did you send me a sample of it? Or was it Lizzie? Correct me, please. <laughs> yes, Karine Leclat. Low Leclat. That's the one for the La Via Bell. Um, Amy says, Claire, random question. What's your favourite Joe Malone? It was so close to... Um, oh, sorry. Or do you like the house at all? I don't own any Joe Malones. I used to I used to have the Ginger Lily... Um, what's it called? You know what I mean. The Ginger Lily one in the black bottle. And I really liked that. And I do quite like that blush suede and peony. I think it's quite nice. But... Uh, I mean, I haven't really tested it, but you hear that it's not great in longevity. Uh, I always, I'm always interested in trying Joe Malone's, but I don't own any at the moment. And Untouchable says, I'm thinking of getting roses for me, as everyone keeps saying it's so close to the Montel. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of like the same house, aren't they? So they're probably just the same thing bottled in a different bottle. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Michael says, happiest of Thursdays to you, Claire. Thank you very much, Michael. Same to you. JC is here. Hey, JC. Good to see you. And uh, Nothing to Find says, yes, stress aggravates everything. Acupuncture is magical. I need my bathtub refurbished so I can take more Epsom salt baths. We're such holistic beings. Get a treadmill for the holiday. Tre I've got a treadmill for this holiday. Treadmill. Oh, God. I don't know about that. <laughs> don't know about running on treadmills but um yeah I, I was so surprised at acupuncture I mean I had a full I had a full like a series of sessions um and it was amazing the way first of all the way you relax when they walk out the room and leave you with all the pins in so relaxing and how zonked out I was and on the way home after the treatment go home need to just go to bed Sometimes felt a lot worse immediately after. Woke up the next day feeling so much better. Something magical, as you say, about acupuncture. And yeah, I may have to go back because I don't know why, but everything seems to be kicking off again. Mm. Uh, Mel says, Millicent Tonka lasts forever on me and I love it. Karine says, my favourite Joe Malone was Oris and Sandalwood, but they discontinued that one. Well, they would, wouldn't they, Karine? <laughs> Uh, Valentina says I tried it by accident in flannels last Sunday and was ready to buy it it impressed me that much but they did not have it in stock sounds like there was none in the UK at the moment I saw it 
on, I think it's, is it called Original, Originals? The, it's a French site. So one of you will know it. It's a French site. They're a little bit cheaper. Um, what are they called? Damn it. I think, I think Lizzie will know it. Lizzie knows the site, I mean. They're based in France. And it's a word like Originals, but it's not Originals. Origins, yes, Kareen, thank you, Origins. <laughs> I think Origins had it when I looked quite recently. And there's, they're coming up on eBay. I'm seeing them on eBay, and they're going for less than retail, generally. So, um, they're about. I think there's more, st I suspect there's a lot more stock this time than there was of the vanilla one last year. Cherie is here. Hello, Cherie. So nice to see you. Looks like you decorated your tree. I know it looks like it's Cherie, <laughs> but looks can be deceiving. This tree has all of three decorations on it, and you're looking at them. <laughs> and I, I did manage to put lights on, so we have made progress. But yeah, so far, there's still only three decorations on this tree. So, But I will definitely try and do it. I can't be asked tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to decorate that bloody tree tomorrow if it kills me. Um, yes, my origins. So uh, it did have my origins did have it when I looked about four days ago, something like that. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So this this Vibel edition uh, Leclat, Le, I think it's called Lo Eclat. Uh, really quite nice. Obviously, it does smell like a Le Vibel. So if you don't like the whole DNA of Le Vibel, forget it. It definitely is a Le Vibel flanker without a shadow. But it has more iris, which is, you know, when is more iris never a good, like, uh, more iris is always a good thing, in my humble, humblest of opinions. So, yeah, um, that's it. I am going to bugger off now because I feel kind of tired and uh, out of breath and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to try and do more lives. Sometimes just life life gets in the way and sometimes I just feel a bit like oh I can't be asked you know um and I, I can't do them if I'm not in the right mood I got to have the right energy and yeah tonight the energy was good but now it's waning <laughs> so thank you everyone really really appreciate you being here and I will see you all very very soon